Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. As some of you guys might know, I've had to take a break from streaming on YouTube for a couple of weeks because my grandfather just passed away. So it's been a really difficult and emotional time for my family. But I'm really happy to be back recording. That's what he would have wanted. So uh, welcome back. I'm excited to be doing another speed build with you guys. And I decided to build my dream home at the moment. That's kind of like a realistic dream home that I could potentially afford to build one day in the future. <laughs> so some of you guys know that I often use The Sims to create a home that I want to live in one day. I'm sure a lot of players do this where you kind of build a house and fantasize about what you would make your house look like if you were able to build a home. Right now I'm not in a position to build this house but it doesn't stop me from kind of going ahead and playing around in The Sims and I don't know figuring out something that would suit my needs. So we actually did this not long ago. I think I did a dream house build that was quite similar to this but this one's different again. And I typically like open plan living. I like lighter wood. So if you guys are kind of sick of seeing this aesthetic again, no worries, you can watch another video, but you might be interested to see what this dream house looks like now that I've thought about it a bit more. These kitchen counters are made by Harry and they are absolutely beautiful. They are custom content. I think they're the only custom content item I will have in this build today. So the kitchen counters are absolutely stunning and I love light woods. I like marble tops or white stone tops in kitchens. So that would probably be my ideal uh, kitchen top <laughs> and also cupboards. I love that. I even love kind of the retro detail on the island, although probably in real life I would go for something a little bit more simple just because these things date over time. But in The Sims, we can do whatever we want. So I went with that. And I want a single story home because I have a dog who is a chow chow and some breeds of dogs, they're not great with stairs, like stairs aren't good on their joints. So I would like to have a single story home so that he doesn't have to go up and down stairs. He likes to sleep close to where we sleep. So he, I don't want him going upstairs at nighttime or being kept away from us. So anyway, this house is going to be single story. It's going to have three bedrooms <laughs> and probably one bedroom would be used as my recording studio. The other bedroom, let's say James is still in the picture. Uh, my boyfriend, he would have the other bedroom as a recording studio. So I decided to go a little bit further and create a whole studio out the back of the home. This would cost more money, but I think it would be ideal to have a three bedroom home plus a studio so we could still have guest rooms, uh, which would be perfect. But obviously, <laughs> probably wouldn't be able to do it on a budget at this point. But this house, I've even decided to have like less windows in it and less uh, sizey rooms because I'm thinking about cost as well. In Australia, typically a lot of uh, land and homes cost a lot more money than say in somewhere like America. It is a huge privilege to be able to buy a first home in this country. And it's something that is very difficult for most people, unfortunately, in this day and age. So um, I'm trying to keep the cost down here for this build because I was thinking in real life, you know, things like windows cost a lot of money, things like Extravagant roofing costs a lot of money. I just want it to be as simple as possible and bathrooms cost a lot of money. It'd be lovely to live in a place where we had an ensuite for every bedroom. But number one, that is a lot of cleaning to do. And number two, bathrooms cost like what, 20 grand each to build. So <laughs> I decided to just go with one main bathroom and one ensuite for the master bedroom. I'm a big believer in having two bathrooms where possible because living with my boyfriend, which is the first uh, boyfriend I've ever lived with, I've realized how nice it is to have two bathrooms if some of you guys wanna get ready at the same time or if someone is unwell, it's good for them to stick to one bathroom. <laughs> anyway, here is the living area and I'm loving this couch from The Sims 4 Eco lifestyle, eco living, eco lifestyle. I'm starting to get really confused with all the names of the Sims 4 packs. Like I feel like the Sims 4 names are so unnecessarily complicated. 
Uh, I understand for marketing, probably mixing it up a bit works the best, but when you're in my position where you're constantly referencing packs where you're using items from on YouTube, it gets so confusing. <laughs> but anyway, I love this chair uh, from that pack. And actually these armchairs are another cus custom content piece. They were by, oh, who are they by? They're like from a tiny living offshoot custom content pack where everything in the pack they've made is made from tiny living items. Let me see. I think it's like more tiny living. I'm just going to look it up right now for you guys. Illogical Sims. It's called Tiny Living Plus. I'll try and remember to link this uh, custom content in the description down below. But those chairs are from that pack and I really like them because they've got a little bit of width to them. Like I feel like you could almost curl up on a chair, on an armchair and read a book or make a list or something like that. Uh, for the TV area, I would really love to have a rug, probably under the dining table and the living area, but having a dog who's indoors, I know a lot of people have dogs inside and will still have rugs, but for me, I feel like I'd rather not have a rug because any fabrics in the house seem to hold on to dog smell. And I have a few members in my family who are extremely sensitive in the nose. I myself am not sensitive in the nose really at all. It took me a long time to even know what BO smelled like because I couldn't smell it in high school. I didn't know what it smelled like. Um, but my family have such sensitive noses. If they come around, I really want my house to have as little doggy smell as possible, even though it's not something that bothers me that much. So I would probably go without rugs. So if you're thinking, hmm, it's looking a bit bare, that's the reason why. And I also thought uh, it would be nice to have kind of like a mud entrance. I've heard from you guys that in places like the UK, Europe, even America to Canada, you often have mud rooms in your houses, which I think the idea is you go into the mud room, you take off like your dirty boots or gum boots or your big jackets and you put it in there, then kind of go into the rest of the house feeling a little bit more clean. And I love that idea. So I have made that little entrance at the front before the door. It's like half open, half enclosed because I thought that would be the spot where you could take off your gum boots. It could be the spot where there's some cabinets or jacket hangers to throw all of that stuff into. Pardon me, I've got some indigestion. So I really like that idea, but with the Australian climate, uh, we don't have in most places anything like snow. We don't usually get weather that goes below zero degrees Celsius. It's quite rare for it to be in the minuses, even in the southern part of Australia where I live. Maybe in Tasmania, which is further south than where I am, <laughs> it is a little colder. But um, for me, you know, it's not so cold that we need to have an enclosed space from like snow or a blizzard. So that's why it's half urban. And also because we have such hot weather, it would be a nice spot to, you know, shake the sand off your sandals or, I don't know, throw your towels there and wash them later. That could be good. And then right now I am making the three bedrooms. So obviously for the master bedroom, I wanted to have a lot of wardrobe space because I notoriously like to have a big wardrobe. My favorite kind of wardrobe would be a Carrie Bradshaw wardrobe, which is like from the show Sex in the City. It's essentially a wardrobe where from the bedroom, you walk through a corridor with wardrobes on either side to your ensuite. So I love that idea of a floor plan. I'm building it right now because you can kind of grab your clothes as you head off to a shower or after your shower, you can just walk through your wardrobe and grab what you need. It just seems like it works really well to me. So I like that idea. So that's what I'm building right now. And I decided to make the living space a little smaller again to cut costs down. Uh, I want it to be spacious, but I don't want it to be so big that it becomes a real hassle to clean. It's more expensive to build I want, and more expensive for heating and cooling and such. So that's why I've kind of, you can see me minimizing a lot of things. And as I minimize things, I make my wardrobe bigger, which doesn't really make sense, does it? <laughs> the other thing that I would keep in mind when building a home that I can't actually show you guys in The Sims is that I would really want to have 
any extra funding put into insulation and the windows. I would love to have triple glazed windows to keep that coolness in in the summer, keep the heat in in the winter. Uh, that is really important to me as well as soundproofing it from any like noise outside and then of course insulating the walls for the exact same reason because in Australia we don't have a lot of strict guidelines in building apparently so I've heard where you have to have the builders work checked um, by council they don't actually have to check that all the insulation is like perfectly sealed or anything like that I've heard in the US through a friend who built there, that there are guidelines that show like you have to check all the insulation, that there's not like even gaps around piping and stuff like that. But in Australia, like builders can cut corners if you don't keep an eye on it or have a good project manager. So <laughs> I would definitely want to ensure that it's, you know, the same quantity, no quality, not quantity. I'd rather a smaller house that's built really, really well than a bigger house that's like poorly insulated. Uh, and it would be lovely to make it as sustainable as possible. But as we all know, unfortunately, often building a sustainable home means it's gonna cost more money and is more time consuming to research and find, you know, an architect who knows what they're doing to design it or someone who can actually plan it to work in an effective way. That can become really expensive. So I would love to do that as well. Uh, and then I had this idea of, last time I think I did a dream house build, everything was very like angular and I didn't, I think I had one peaked roof, but nothing else had a peaked roof. So I kind of had this idea it would be fun to have lots of peaked roofs. And I actually showed James uh, after I did the build, hey, look at the house. And he's like, wow, that's a lot of peaked roofs. So I was like, what? He said he didn't like it. So I guess we would change the roofing a bit, but I didn't mind it. I thought it was still nice. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of having too many peaked roofs. I also like the idea of having some kind of, I guess, more modern uh, cladding that kind of gives the illusion of it being a little bit farmhousey or rustic. So it'd be a metal cladding in like vertical strips. You see it all around <laughs> uh, this area and it's nice and modern, but I couldn't actually find any wallpaper in The Sims 4 that really reflected it effectively. So I've just kind of used that white, uh, I don't even know what that is. I think it's still timber, but it kind of looks like it could maybe be a metal. There's also timber that look, oh, there's like timber, that, timber looking metal you can put on the exterior of your house. So it kind of looks like it's timber, but it's not. Uh, and that means that it could, often be better insulated or the other reason why people use it is because if you have a timber or a weatherboard house usually to maintain it you have to repaint it every 10 years to make sure that the the wood isn't rotting and that here like painting a whole exterior of a house can cost like ten thousand dollars upwards if you get someone in to do it so that's another thing to keep in mind that it's so funny like i've been watching all of these grand design episodes and like speaking to a few people who have built houses because it's something that I really would love to do one day and just hearing about all these extra little things that you wouldn't think about when you don't know much about building a house. You're like, oh wow, there's a lot of things to consider. The other thing with windows is there's a lot of windows to clean the more glass you have. And window cleaning is also something that takes a lot of time if you do it yourself. So I tried to have less windows. Windows are also expensive, but I did find out you can get self-cleaning windows, which would be very cool, but obviously expensive as well. <laughs> and if you look up how they work, it's really interesting because it's like the water hits the window and instead of like just staying as droplets, they kind of, all the droplets separate into smaller ones and then kind of just disappear. So it doesn't leave big dusty droplet stains on the window, which I thought was pretty interesting to look at. So uh, yeah, we have our dining area, kitchen area and living area, pretty much the floor plan done. The, the flooring is not going to be concrete. <laughs> it's going to be wooden. I love the idea of having, uh, what, what is this flooring called? Where the herring flooring? Oh, I've had a total mental blank. Where it's like a triangular wooden pattern. I love that look, but I feel like it could date 
in like 10 years time really badly. I don't know, maybe it is a classic, but in lighter wood, I thought it could date. This is kind of trending right now. So <laughs> I decided to just do regular boring flooring. Of course, the lighter wood. And then I've got this skylight that actually goes over the hallway because I don't like enclosed spaces. I can be quite claustrophobic. So I thought if we have a hallway, it'd be beautiful to have like a glass, some kind of skylight over it to let some natural light in. And the other thing with windows is in the Australian summers, Australian summers are hot. It, windows can make a house like a hot box really, really quickly. So having a lot of glass, if it's not like triple glazed glass or at least double glazed, it can get very, very warm very quickly. So that's another reason why I'd wanna have like a really high quality glass in my home. And then of course, having a dog that I take I don't know, I, when I think about my dog, my dog, the Alzar, is really a family member and he needs to be comfortable as well. So I want to make sure I have a beautiful backyard for him with grass that he can poo poo and wee wee on and run around and have zoomies on. He can have some friends over and they can just be free to run around. So obviously a fence is really important to keep him enclosed and safe uh, from the road and such. So I'd have a fence, uh, definitely. And I would also have a fence to the front yard as well, just in case he couldn't be in the backyard. If there was some work being done, he could be put in the front yard and still be safe. And also just for a change of scenery, if he felt like going out the front, if people were coming over, he could greet them there uh, or watch, you know, people walking past all of that. So I thought it'd be nice to have a front yard and a backyard and then gates on the side so that both of those spaces could be separate. And then over here, I was thinking it would be nice to try and make a wing of the house into a studio from the master bedroom. And this is what I was originally thinking of doing, but it was actually really hard to organize it so we could have two desks in there and have a green screen and then have a sliding door to separate the recording spaces. So obviously when James and I are recording in the same office, it's really nice to have the company of someone else here. But if you wanna record at the same time, you can't do that. You have to take it in turns. So I thought in my last build, it would be really nice to have like a room and then a sliding glass partition where when you close it, it's totally soundproofed. And then you can open it back up again if you wanna work in the same space. Uh, and that's what I'm kind of doing here. I thought, okay, let's put like a sliding door in the middle and then we can have our green screen painted walls behind us so we can have face cam. Uh, and it was just kind of like tricky because the problem is if there's one door, then you'd have to walk, one person would have to walk behind the other person to get to their computer while they're recording. So they'd have to interrupt and that would get annoying. <laughs> And also ideally, it would be great to have a bathroom near the studio. So if you're live streaming, you can just like pop out and go to the bathroom quickly and not have to go like through the whole house. So I also like the idea that it was kind of attached closely to our ensuite as well. So we can pop in, in and out. But in the end, this didn't really work out, I don't think. Yeah, I think I completely delete it and I put it in a similar orientation to my last dream house build that I did. So the idea is you walk out from the living area, on, you go outside, but it's under cover. So if it's raining, it's all good. And then you walk into the studio on the other side. And this undercover area also would provide a spot for Bowser to be my dog when it's raining, but he can still be outside and be comfortable. Uh, and that space would also be tiled as well. So there's like an outdoor space without a grass area to maintain. So that's what I thought would work best. Uh, and that also means that you could have two entrances if you wanted to, uh, so two doors so one person doesn't have to interrupt the other person. I thought that kind of worked well. <laughs> and ideally, if I had the budget to, I would also have the ensuite added to this. I don't think I put it in this build because I thought, well, obviously it's gonna be way too expensive to put an ensuite in at, at first. <laughs> so I get rid of that. And yeah, we're just enclosing uh, this area with a higher fence. Uh, one thing about Chow Chows, the dog breed I have, is that they are naturally fierce protectors of the home. They're very, very good guard dogs. But the problem is, 
if you have fences all around them that they can see through all the time, they're going to be on guard all the time. And I think having a higher fence obviously stops them from being uh, triggered by lots of stimuli to, you know, sound an alarm. But it also means that they can relax because they don't have to feel like they're always on the guard job. So I'd like to have a higher fence in the backyard and then maybe a fence you can see through in the front yard. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the the plan for the house. <laughs> I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments down below and if you have anything you would do differently. If you guys have ever renovated or built a house, I would love to scroll through the comments and see if you guys have any tips or anything you're not a fan of that you would change or do differently. Uh, in terms of this white brick, I'm a huge fan of vintage old bricks. I love uh, anything that's kind of industrial. I'm a real fan of that because I think that comes from my dad being a professional welder. So there was a lot of like metals when I grew up and he'd make a lot of handmade furniture and stuff like that. So I'm a big fan of having some industrial features in the home, but I'm just not sure how you do that on a budget. So I just put white bricks in the kitchen for The Sims, but ideally there'd be something maybe recycled there that could be cool. Uh, and then some big square paintings, big fan of square oriented art. <laughs> a nice uh, bookshelf as well. Our lounge area would be quite simple, I think. A doggy bed in the corner. And I put a bathtub out there in sink just before the studio uh, and a little barbecue area. This is gonna sound ridiculous as well, but my dog is a long haired dog, so he needs grooming sometimes and I don't like grooming him in the shower that I use because after you groom him you have to wash the whole shower because it's such a big thing so it'd be great to have an outdoor bath to throw him into get it all done and not have to worry about it being pristine again uh, so that's why there's a bath out there and then you could use the same plumbing to have like a beach shower if it was in a beach neighborhood I thought that would be quite nice too and pools it would be so nice to have a lap pool. I think that would be super duper nice, but pools sound so expensive to maintain. I just, I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> I mean, the idea of it's really, really nice, but the upkeep of it, I think it would be really time consuming too. I just want like an easy home to live in. Everything's as easy as possible and just neat and clean and just, you know, everything has a home, there's plenty of storage. Things aren't like bursting out cupboards. That's how I would like to live. Um, that would be really, really nice, especially after living in apartments for a few years and not having that storage and outdoor space uh, or a bathtub. It definitely makes you really think, okay, this is something I would love to have one day. Makes you appreciate these things a lot more when you don't have them. And then just, you know, making the guest rooms look nice. Uh, so I don't know, I just went with some colors that I thought looked nice, but probably in real life, I'd keep it a little bit more simple. Um, but I think in The Sims, it's nice to play around with the colors and these wall colors on the feature walls, they're actually from another CC pack. I think the Tiny Twavelers pack, again by Harry and Felix Andre Sims. So I'll link that down below as well. But I love these wall colors. I wish we did have them in the game. I think we need some more contemporary hues in the game. That's just like plain colors or plain swatches on the walls. Uh, so those are a really nice mix. So I have used three different custom content items, even though I said I only used one. We have two more. <laughs> but if you do want to download this house off the gallery, it's up there now under the username Deligracy and just tick the box that says show content with uh, custom content so you'll be able to see it. And like I said, the only things you would have to replace uh, if you have all of the Sims content I've used, or the only CC content you have to replace would be the kitchen benches, uh, the feature wallpaper, I've already forgotten. Oh yeah, the two armchairs, so it's not, not much to replace. I try and keep uh, any custom content to a limit these days so it's not too difficult to download the house and replace things. And of course, this is our bedroom with the walk-in Carrie Bradshaw wardrobe. Love that. Full-length mirror is always a good thing to have as well, I think, just to check yourself. Ideally, I like having a full-length mirror before you go out the door. 
but uh, one in the bedroom would be nice as well. I don't think I actually put one near the entranceway in this build, but we'll check it out soon. We'll have a little walkthrough of the actual build in just a second. And yeah, just popping up a couple of other paintings around the place, something bright, a little bit funky. Oh, and of course we have the bathrooms to do as well. So as I said, I've kept this to a limit of two bathrooms. Ideally, I would have a bathroom out near the studio as well, so it'd be three bathrooms. I mean, in a dream house, every bedroom would have a bathroom plus a main bathroom plus a studio bathroom, but that's a lot of money. <laughs> and I love the idea of having two sinks as well, like a his and her sink or a his and his, her and her, they and they. Uh, I think that would be really nice too, just particularly me thinking of others because I get ready with my makeup and my makeup is everywhere and Honestly, I just kind of feel bad when the other person has to put up with that. <laughs> so it's more so for them. And to have like an industrial strength sink in the bathroom would be amazing because makeup always gets caught in the sink. Like every sink I've had, the sink isn't strong enough to handle makeup going down the drain. So I, and I don't wear super heavy makeup, but I wear makeup daily for filming usually. And it would just be great to have sinks that were like industrial sinks <laughs> for that reason. And then there we go. There's our recording studio with the two setups, the green screen walls at the back and a partition in the middle. You know, thinking about now, it'd probably have to be wider. Um, but it's, it's the idea. It's a good idea there. And there's three doggy food bowls too. Two water bowls and one food bowl, so there's always plenty of water there. But let's jump into the build and have a walk through it. Okay, so here is the finished house. It's very simple, like I said, to keep costs down as much as it would be lovely to have like an architectural digest worthy home. <laughs> I thought this one was still pretty good and it's got a little bit of difference in the textures with the stone front over here. But let me know if this is too many peaked roofs or if you don't mind it. So this little entrance would be where you can put uh, your boots, your jackets, all of that good stuff. And then you go through this front door and we have the very spacious open living. So you've got the kitchen there which I quite like this orientation of kitchen. Uh, this is actually similar to the kitchen I have right now where I live. Dining table over here with a nice big painting, uh, just a simple living area with some bookshelves and knickknacks around the place. Uh, and then through here, you have that beautiful big skylight, a bookshelf on the side. And in here we have our first bedroom. So it's nice, yellow, bright. You've got desk space as well as a built-in wardrobe. To the left, we have the master bedroom, which obviously fits a nice big bed in there. Uh, you can see out to the backyard, you've got your Carrie Bradshaw wardrobe. And then if we walk through this door, this is the beautiful bathroom with the double sink and toilet, shower, maybe even a double shower would be very nice. <laughs> through here is the main bathroom and this is where the bathtub is. I'd love a bathtub. You know, it would be nice to have the bathtub probably at the window so you could look out. That would probably be a better design choice, but that's essentially the main bathroom. And then the second bedroom over here, similar orientation to the first, but probably not room for a desk. Um, or just a smaller desk in there. And then if we go through here out to the backyard, this is our uh, covered area where there's a barbecue, a bathtub, which looks kind of weird here. I don't know, you'd have to design it a little bit better than that, I think. Uh, we have a nice outdoor entertainment area, lots of grass and little things for Bowser to do. A clothesline, I would love to have a clothesline <laughs> outside. Uh, and then we've got the little exercise mat so I could go out there and do my exercise. Of course, some trees, but a minimal garden for me would be ideal. Um, some extra storage too. I'm quite big on storage. And actually there'd probably need to be another door around the side to the other office, but the offices would be pretty compact and then you could have this big dividing wall that could open up as well. So that, uh, that's kind of the current dream house for me. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your dream house is in the comments down below. Your Maybe your realistic dream house or maybe your 
uh, fantasy dream house, <laughs> let me know. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. I'll speak to you soon. <laughs> dag, dag.